to have what you really want, you've got to embrace who you really are. And this is something that came to be when I decided to completely leave network marketing. I had to realize and come to grips with that. Like, yes, network marketing got you to where you are, but it doesn't mean that you have to stay in it just because you're grateful for it. You get to move on because that's not who you really are. Welcome to part two of the 36 lessons I have learned in my 36 years of living. I know it's been a while. So I'm going to share with you the next 10 on this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed part one. I really like these like quick golden nuggets when we share these on the podcast, because I feel like you can easily implement them. Like they're easy chunks to go, okay, how can I implement this into my life when it resonates with you? So number 11 is you don't get rich by living cheaper or saving. So this is mind blowing for some people, especially if you're newer to the podcast, because you've been told your entire life to save your money, to buy the cheaper thing, to get the bargain. And I, you know, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just what you've been taught. But if you really think about it right now, okay, if you really, really think about the life that you want to live, do you want to get there by getting the bottom of the barrel on everything? When I really think about this for my life, it's like, no, of course, I don't like to overpay for things. And you want to be smart and be a good steward of your money. But, you know, always going and saving everything instead of enjoying life or taking a risk and investing in yourself, in your business, in investment opportunities. That's how you're eventually going to have financial freedom or have a lot of choices one day is because you take those risks. And I'm really surprised by a lot of people that just like, they're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I can't make the time. I can't do that. I, you know, uh, I don't have the enough money in my savings to feel comfortable making that investment opportunity or, you know, making that investment leap. And I'm just like, what? Like, I don't know why my brain just does not work that way. And I really just think that the way that I got to where I am today was by taking a lot of risk and by investing in a lot of things. Does everything work out? No, but you know, it's just important to me. And it's also like, I don't like going to TJ Maxx. I love using this example. I hate going to Home Goods. I absolutely hate walking into a Marshalls. Like it gives me the freaking heebie jeebies. There's way too much stuff, way too many options. My brain just completely shuts down. My girlfriend, who's like a fashionista, she used to be a stylist before she got married. She said, Kayla, there's this incredible designer sale in this warehouse and like literally everything's gonna be 50% off. And I needed to go to a gala that weekend. So I was like, okay, oh, you know, I love designer stuff. Like, you know, she had said a certain brand that I like and I was like, oh my gosh, okay. Like I'll definitely go. I walked into that warehouse and as quickly as I walked in, I walked out because it was like a TJ Maxx Marshalls in there where you had to comb through everything. Nothing was put in the right area like, you know, size wise and stuff. And I was like, I would spend my entire day here just to save, you know, 50% on the stress. And I'm like, no, thank you. There's a million other things I would rather be doing right now than finding a good deal on the stress. Like, no, I'd rather just buy a Target dress at that point because it saves me time. Okay. So remember that every time you choose to do something, you're choosing not to do something else. And so if I would have spent my entire day in that warehouse you know, trying to find an inexpensive dress or a really great deal on that dress, then I wouldn't have been able to spend the day with my husband. And we ended up having a fun lunch date and like having such a great conversation about his business and just ideas were flowing. Okay. So that is a rich life to me. Number 12, 
Marriage is the most important decision you'll make. Choose the person who will point you to Jesus. Man, marriage has been the hardest thing in my life, like being married, period. Even if I wasn't married to Chase, I think that just marriage period would have been hard for me because of just the way that I grew up and just I wasn't really shown healthy couples growing up. And so I had a lot of stuff I had to work on inside of me to be a healthy person in a relationship, right? But thank God I was married to somebody who constantly pointed me to God, even when I didn't want to hear about God, just like the things that he would do or like his actions of just reading the Bible or praying with the kids. And the Holy Spirit in me would be like, oh yeah, like you're wrong. You need to apologize. You need to do this. So because of that, I feel like, you know, Chase and I are about to celebrate our 15th wedding anniversary. And it's a huge milestone because we're at a place in our marriage where we're happy with each other. We like each other. We love each other. We're flirting. We like to spend time with each other. We really just have this groove of, I don't know, just happiness and in our marriage. And it's really a fun season. I hope it stays like this forever, right? But what's happening that's really, really cool is he is at this place in his life where his business is exploding. And I know it's my time to really focus on the kids. Yes, my businesses are still growing, but I can't give them the same effort that I could have given them three years ago because I need to do more with the kids and they require more of me at this moment and chase. I really want him to be able to focus on this because this is like his opportunity to go after his dreams. And so I'm saying no to some of the stuff, right? Because I'm like, no, it's about Chase right now. And I want to make sure he has the best opportunity and I'm speaking life into him. I'm being very careful about even just bringing him some of the problems I would have brought him a year and a half ago. And I'm thinking and going straight to God first and just going, okay, how can I work with this on my own? You know, because when you're married to your best friend, you usually bring them all your problems. But I know where he's going to that next level in his business. He can't have all the stuff, right? He can't carry all my stuff with him right now. And that's really a sacrificial, I think, thing as a like spouse to be able to know, like, okay, I need to let my husband like really go all in on this opportunity, on that thing. And that's what makes a true power couple, I believe, is like knowing when it's your time to really completely be 100% focused on another spouse because they need you in that moment and deny what, like not what you need, because I'm getting everything that I need, but just going like, I'm not going to focus on as much on like my things right now because I don't need to. And I feel like God's called me here. And that takes a special kind of person. And I'm not trying to give myself kudos because let me tell you what, five years ago, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> I'd have been like, uh, figure it out, dude. I would not have helped him, but I'm like waking up in the morning and I'm thinking about ways to make his life easier for that day. And I know that's totally God, but this is why who you marry is so important with achieving your dreams in your life. Because imagine if Chase is married right now to the same person I was five years ago. Like he wouldn't be thriving the way that he is because I would have been too much drama for him. We've been bringing him too much crap all the time. And so it's really cool to see that involvement, but he married somebody that was committed to evolving. Like when we got married, we were both growth mindset people. We weren't people that were like, oh yeah, we're just going to be the same forever. Like we were committed to being the best individuals we could be. Did we know it was going to turn out like this? No, not at all. But I just think about that for you. If you're married right now, if you're thinking about getting married, like don't marry for the, the love, I guess you could say, marry for the vision and your purpose that God has destined you for. Like that is so important. And teach your kids. that. Like that's what I'm teaching my kids right now to critically think about your relationship and how important it's going to be. So I can make a whole podcast episode on that probably, but here we are. Number 13, to have what you really want, you've got to embrace who you really want are. And this is something that came to be when I decided to 
completely leave network marketing. I have so much gratitude for getting involved in network marketing in my early 20s. I don't see another way of how I would get to this dream life that I'm in today had I not been involved in network marketing as an ER nurse, right? Because it was the quickest path to success for me, having very little skills and talents, you know, when it came to network marketing. Uh, But I knew I liked people. I had a little bit of sales experience and social media I was completely ignorant to and I just learned as I went. So I'm super, super grateful for that. And I also created like this persona of the network marketing Kayla. But when I decided and asked myself the question, what do I really want? Which is why I am writing a whole book on it, right? Is going, okay, what I really, really, really want is assets that cash flow. So I have time freedom to spend a lot of time with my kids, spend a lot of time with my husband, to give back to things that matter to me, like sex trafficking, prison ministry. And I just want a lot, a lot of freedom. And I also want to be aligned with people who point people to Jesus and not to money. Because I believe if you really, if you really strive after who Jesus is, the money will always come because your heart will be a servant's heart and you're just going to be focused on giving to people around you. And when you have that mindset, money always comes. So you don't have to even worry about that. But to have what you really want, you got to embrace who you really are. And what I realized was who I was, was not really this network marketing persona. Like I really, at the end of the day, just don't like having to do all of those things. I don't enjoy it. I don't feel good after team meetings and training and letting people have access to me that are not really committed. And so like who I really am is somebody that is very, very, very picky about who I spend time with, period. Who has access to me? And network marketing, you know, people believe if they buy a protein shake from you that they should have unlimited access to you. And I'm like, no. So I had to realize and come to grips with that. Like, yes, network marketing got you to where you are, but it doesn't mean that you have to stay in it just because you're grateful for it. You get to move on because that's not who you really are. That's not who you really are. You're a mom of three, a wife of somebody who is building an incredible business. You have a podcast. You love to connect with people of all different types of industries. You don't like to be in a box. You like to solve problems. And, you know, being inside of a network marketing company, specifically the one that I was in, it, it really puts you in a box and you're frowned upon if you do anything else. And so I had to release myself from that and really step into who God made me to be. And there we go. Number 14, sleep is the most important part of your aging cycle. In my 20s, I would go to bed every night at like one o'clock because I was building my businesses and I'd wake up at six. And I, I could do that. Like I was fine during the day. Like I could rock it. And then I turned 30 and I feel like things changed for me where it was like, you better get eight hours of sleep. And I had to change my routine up. I had to figure out new ways of doing life because the night owl routine was not going to serve me in this season of life that I'm in with growing kids that all have to get up at six o'clock, that they need good sleep too. And I had to, you know, do things like turn off the Wi-Fi at my house, make sure there's no blue light at night, doing all of these things that actually give me restful sleep using my brain tap, taking my ashwagandha at night and like having a bedtime routine was really, really helpful for me to help with sleeping because there was a time this last year where I was really suffering from insomnia and I went to a doctor, I got my hormones checked, I got on hormones and that was really helpful. And now I feel like a new person being able to sleep again. So I will never take my sleep for granted And I want to stress that to all of you guys, make sure that you are getting plenty of sleep because it really does affect your brain and the way your cells are aging. When you get good sleep, you can honestly age backwards because your brain is getting plenty of rest. So number 15, not everything deserves a response from you. Not everything deserves a response from you. 
What's so funny is as I wrote out my 36 lessons, the next day I wrote this. Okay. And the next day I have a reel that goes viral and I've learned over the years from going viral many times that after about 12 hours, once the virality hits, I don't read the comments because they get out of control with lots of like hate and people will just say mean things. And I, I don't, I don't put stuff out there to get disagreements, you know? I don't put stuff out there to like start fights with people. Okay. I put out my opinion to help people. Okay. That's, that's it. But I know not everybody is going to agree. And I'm totally fine with having peaceful disagreements, but people can get like pretty mean. So what's so funny is, you know, I say this, not everything deserves a response from you. And then I break my rule. And cause it's like, I, at one point I had like at this day, I think it was like up to 600 comments. And I was like, whoa, what are people saying? Like, I honestly genuinely was curious if people were agreeing or disagreeing because in the first couple hours of me posting that reel, people totally agreed. And I was like, oh, yay, it's going to help people. Like, yay, this is awesome. And then, you know, by the time it was at 600 comments, I was like, whoa, people are pissed. (laughs) People are really pissed about what I got to say. And I knew I was growing because I laughed. Like people said some mean things and I was just laughing, which I would say five years ago, I would have ripped people to shreds online. So I've, I've really grown. I've been sanctified. I've been coming, I'm becoming holy over here. Okay. Cause I'm just letting things roll off of me. But I just thought the timing of it was hilarious. As I write this lesson, not everything deserves a response from you. And then I'm laughing that, wow, it is true. Like I've really grown to that place where I don't need to respond to all these people and try to teach them my point of view. It's just like, let it be. It is what it is, right? And my peace is more important than anything. So number 16, this is good. God is love. You were made in the image of God and loving people well is the best act of service. Whoa, this is a lot right here. This is a lot to unpack because when you realize if you were made in the image of God and God is love, loving people well is the best act of service. So you got to make a point of being intentional about loving people well. Loving people isn't just making them feel good all the time. I love my kids. I love them really well. And do I let them get away with bad behavior? No, because I'm here to teach them and help sanctify them and help them, you know, become independent beings in this world and become the next best generation. So I have got to learn how to mold them and reflect love to them and guide them by being an example. Like there's so much here. I should probably do a whole podcast again on just this certain topic. But when you really take hold of the truth that you were made in the image of God, you move differently because you know your job is to love people. And that means holding people accountable to their word. It means holding boundaries. But it also means at the same time, like displaying kindness. Even when Jesus got angry in the Bible and he flipped tables in the temple, he was still loving with his words because he was calling people forward to where they were truly meant to be, where God designed them to be. So think about that. Number 17, when you're on your phone, make your dreams happen. And what I mean by this is like, if I pick up my phone, I'm using it to make my dreams happen. Whether it's right now, you know, getting my real estate fund filled, getting our cash advance syndication filled, helping people that are my coaching clients reach their dreams because their dreams become my dreams, right? That's when I'm on my phone. I'm not on there to waste time scrolling and not having any intentionality behind it. I'm looking, maybe I'm researching, maybe I'm doing something that is helping me live out my dream life. But I have this rule because I spent way too much time living unintentional on my phone because, you know, I was on my phone working, but then sometimes I wasn't working and I had made this justification of being on my phone all the time. So now I have this rule and it's been really, really great with my kids. Number 18, be extremely intentional about who has access to you. So this is important because access, what does the word access mean? It means that people can come in. Okay, so who are you letting into your heart and into your mind? 
not saying I will be in a room with people I can't stand because that doesn't mean that they have access to me just because I'm at a birthday party with them, right? Not for them, but at the same birthday party, giving you an example, right? They don't have access to me. They can't come speak into my life just because I'm in the same vicinity as them. And I don't feel bad about that anymore. And I'm looking for people who will call me forward and will always ultimately point me to Jesus and not to the world. Number 19, leverage will make you rich if you do it wisely. So you don't want to leverage bad credit, consumer debt, buying things that you don't really need with money you don't really have, but leveraging things like a home, a business that you could take a loan out on to help you. Maybe you have a lower percent interest on that that will help you get into an investment. For example, what I just did was in my infinite banking account, I'm able to pull out a loan on money I put in there. So that's my money that I had invested in there, right, for years. And I needed to pull that money out for a house, an investment property that I was buying. So I pulled out a loan at 4%. But this account that I pulled it out of makes 8 to 12% a year. So even though I'm going to have to pay a 4% interest on that loan, that money is still going to be making me 8 to 12% minus the 4, right? So let's just say 4 to 8% at that moment. So this is what's mind blowing when you learn leverage and how to become the bank yourself. If you need more information on that, just DM me the word bank and I'll give you resources I have on that. Number 20, max out your retirement contributions yearly and self-direct them. Now, I am obsessed, obsessed with retirement accounts and self-directing them. I didn't even know this was a thing until recently. Thank God for an amazing network helping me out. But you guys, it's an incredible opportunity for you and your family because you can also max out your kids' retirement things and self-direct them into accounts. And what helps you in this is this is how you create tax-free wealth. If you are interested at all in opening up your own retirement accounts or even self-directing retirement accounts you already have open, Just go to directedira.com forward slash craft and you'll pay a one-time fee to get these things opened. They'll teach you everything about self-directing. You can self-direct your retirement funds into my real estate fund or into our cash advance syndication as well. So really, really great opportunities because your retirement funds, if managed by, I don't want to give an actual name, but by the bigger management companies, you're paying a lot in fees and you're getting very low returns. So you want to look for ways where you can get maximum returns while also getting maximum tax benefits. So self-directing your IRA into alternative assets is a really great thing to do. Most wealthy people are uh, constantly, I think 80% of the wealthiest people in the world, their net worth is in alternative assets. So make sure to go to directedira.com forward slash craft to get your self-directed IRA up and running. All right, so we are done with part two of 36 lessons. I hope you're loving it. I'm loving giving out the nuggets, like to like give it and move on really quick. So remember, ask me any questions over on social media, kayla.craft, and leave a review of the show if you haven't yet. Maybe share this out with somebody that needs to hear it. And I'm so thankful you're listening in. You can also go to our Facebook group, Crafted Entrepreneur, get to know some other crafted entrepreneurs, and you can maybe collaborate on your journey of success. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.